Hey, you guys, Deep this year. Man has switched from the £1,000 Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra to the £400 Galaxy A52 5G. Let me tell you how that even went. Yes, yes, what's good, people? Tech Jamo. Now, we're out here with the Galaxy A52 5G, Samsung's newest mid-ranger. Now, before I go any further, can man give a big, big shout out to Vodafone for hooking me up with this Galaxy A52 5G for review. Like, they've been putting bare phones on the channel and like, yeah, man, they've just been supporting the thing. So make sure you check out their link in the description section below where you can find some dope deals for the Galaxy A52 5G. Now, I'm not gonna go too much into specs because I just want to talk to you about how this thing has performed as a phone. But specs wise, we're talking Snapdragon 750, six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, quad camera, 120 hertz display, and an IP67 water and dust rating. Something that is just unheard of in a mid-range phone. Usually, you know, they come with the high refresh rate screen and maybe they got a slightly faster processor in there, but the water and dust rating in a mid-ranger? Samsung, you're changing the game there. Now guys, I gotta tell the truth. When I first got this thing out of the box, I was like, okay, it's plasticky. It's definitely not like a premium build situation, but to be honest, I didn't really mind because it kind of reminded me of the OnePlus Nord I had a couple few months ago and that phone felt nice after a while. Look, I just started ignoring the plasticky feel. And to be honest, I put it in a nice little cheap case anyway. So how the actual phone feels, I just, I just don't know. And that's the same situation even with my Galaxy S21 Ultra. How could I almost forget to mention the battery? The battery, why is the phone upside down? The battery being a 4,500 milliamp hour cell. Fam, this thing is doing the stamina run. I've not had to charge this any more than I would normally charge my Galaxy S21 Ultra. And I think that's partially thanks to the 1080p display. Obviously the 120 Hertz refresh rate does cut down the battery quite a bit, but when you're at 1080p, it's not too bad. Now, looking into media and software, I'm cool with the Samsung UI. Like it does its job, it's it's not got bare bloatware on it kind of thing. The only thing that I really don't like about the Samsung software is the fact that when you eventually unlock the phone and you want to get open the app drawer, when you swipe up, you have to swipe left and right to go through your apps. What is that? Why am I not just doing one continuous swipe upwards to go through my app drawer? Like, it just makes sense to me, just the normal pixel way. Obviously, I can put third-party apps on there, so it's not a problem, but Samsung, sort it out, fam. I don't wanna be putting extra apps for my phone to have to run just to get my app drawer to behave the way it's supposed to in the first place. Another surprise that I got with the A52 5G are the stereo speakers. Like, again, guys, I'll tell you, when you're going for a mid-range smartphone, like a cheaper smartphone, sub 500, you're not looking to get all these necessities and extra features that you usually get with the plus 900 pound smartphones. So to have stereo speakers, yeah, 120 Hertz refresh rate screen, IP67, those are features that are normally reserved for the big boy phones. So how they made their way to the mid-range phones, sub 500 pound, I don't know, but I'm glad the features are here because they sound booming. I'll give you a little example. OS, all that good stuff. Let me just put that at the back right here. Let's just get this off. Okay, I understand. This is what the thing is saying fam. That's, that's all right, that packaging is all right for me, you know. Now I wasn't really gonna talk about this because obviously the screen is just standard procedure, but I just thought I'd let you guys know that Watching Netflix on here, watching YouTube, watching anything, whether it's portrait or landscape, like Instagram reels, fam, it just it just looks nice, fam. And together with the stereo speakers, you're in for a nice cinematic experience, especially if you wanna slap some headphones into the included headphone jack. 
nearly forgot to even mention the gaming performance. Now the gaming performance on this, that Snapdragon 750G, it's there. It's there, you already know it's there. I don't really have to go into this with you, but playing the games that come out on mobile, anything above like, I don't know, a Snapdragon 732G is gonna be good. Even less than that, to be honest, because games on mobile, Android games, they're very well optimized. This can play anything, I chuck at it. I don't need the crazy frame rate that some games don't even offer. <laughs> um, and yeah, like game for game, Playing games on this and then playing games on my S21 Ultra, I haven't noticed any performance issues. Now guys, let's discuss the camera because I'm sure that this must be where Samsung started cutting cost in getting their £1,000 phone down to be £400. Now, in terms of the camera app itself, even launching the camera, it's all the same as the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Literally, double click the power button to quickly launch the camera and boom, you're there to go, you're ready to take a picture, a video, whatever you're trying to take. And it's the same for the menus. You can customize the menus on the camera app to only have the shooting modes that you use most frequently and hide anything you don't really normally use, like panorama or whatever it is, slow motion, maybe you don't use that that much. You can hide it, you don't even have to look at it. Now, it's some of the shooting modes where we start to cut some corners from what we get offered on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. And it's basically 4K at 60 frames per second. We don't have none of that here on the Galaxy A52 5G. We max out here at 4K 30 on the rear facing camera and 4K 30 on the front facing camera. And you also get 1080p 60 on both the rear and front facing cameras as well. So if you do need that 60 frames per second on the front facing camera, it just means that you're gonna have to do it at 1080p, which is still quite decent for doing a little vlog, a little phone vlog, um, a little satin satin, you know what I'm saying, kind of thing. One thing that I would say this has got over the Galaxy S21 Ultra is the fact that it has a headphone jack here, which as I was saying before, means that I can plug a microphone directly into the phone via the headphone jack. I don't have to buy a 3.5 millimeter to USB-C adapter. So this is really a dope phone for you content creators out there that literally just wanna go out with a phone, with a microphone, and with a little maybe a mini tripod kind of thing and do some vlogging. Just look at this vlogging sample here I've done using the built-in microphone on the phone camera. All uh, right, so here's a little video sample on a Galaxy A52 5G. Um, it's now 4K at 30 frames per second. So this is the maximum resolution and frame rate that the Galaxy A52 can get to. And man can press this little button in the corner to swap the cameras around. There we go, just like that. Now you guys probably already realized there's no image stabilization on this mode. So that's what the situation is. If you do want image stabilization, you have to go down to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now, now that I'm on the rear facing camera, I can also switch to the wide angle lens, like so, boom. There we go, nice and seamless, switch back to the normal wide lens, boom, just like that. Oh no, that's the zoom lens. There we go, that's the normal wide lens. So yeah, you can do quite a lot whilst the camera's all in. Switch from the super wide angle, switch back to the selfie lens. Now I'm wondering if it's gonna have that thing where there's a little bit of audio lag when it's switching lenses. So when I switch to myself, it might, you know, cut out audio for a second, but I'm not sure if that's what this does, but it seems to work pretty well. You could use this on a holiday to vlog. You know, this is the normal sound that's coming out of the phone itself. So we'll see what this microphone sounds like. All right. Not to mention, it's also got support for those pro video modes. So if you're really on this phone camera ting and you want control of your shutter speed, your ISO, your focus, all them things that I don't understand, you can go into the pro video mode and do that, or you can go into the pro photo mode and do that. Now, I've left the photo performance of this camera till last because obviously I'm not really a photographer. I take my pictures of food or whatever, and I literally post it to Instagram or post it to Twitter, whatever I'm posting it to, it's going to social media. And literally, I tell you this guys, I've had this phone posting pictures of food to my social media at Jamal Be Hungry for the last three weeks. And honestly, 
I feel like the pictures look the same, they're completely the same as they would look if I took them on the S21 Ultra. And for me, then that, that's enough. I, I don't really need to go into the camera performance any more than that. Like taking pictures, taking portraits, all the camera features that are on the S21 Ultra are on here, albeit they may have less resolution or less whatever. But when they go onto social media, because of the compression, nobody will even realize anyway. So does it really matter to you? Let me know. So yeah, in conclusion, comparing, you know, the Galaxy A52 5G for £400 and the Galaxy S21 Ultra for £1,000, there's not really been much that I can't do on both of these phones. Now, some things that I can't do on the Galaxy A52 5G is I can't wireless charge it, I can't shoot 4K 60 frames per second video, I can't watch content at 2K because obviously it's a 1080p screen and I can't zoom up to 100 times. Now, it's, it's your own personal preference whether that stuff matters to you. The zooming at 100 times, I really don't care. The wireless charging, which is super slow on the Galaxy S21 Ultra anyway, I honestly don't care. Shooting 4K 60 frames per second video, mm, yeah, I have to admit, I do care about that. I'm a content creator. I wanna get the highest frame rate and the highest resolution out of my devices. So that's the only one thing that is good out of the Galaxy S21 Ultra for me. And watching things at 2K, again, it's not really that much of a problem to me, but if I'm watching some content back or doing something like that, ideally, you wanna watch your content back in the highest resolution possible. So that's where I would be using the 2K display. But honestly, I'm on a battery saving thing on my Galaxy S21 Ultra. I have it in 1080p mode and have the frame rate at 120 hertz, which is exactly what you get as default with the Galaxy A52 5G. So guys, what I'm saying is, if I had to choose out one of these phones, I wouldn't stress myself to save up a thousand pounds for the S21 Ultra. I'd be here. This is where I would be fam. Mm. This basically does everything except what I've said it doesn't do. So for me, this is this is enough. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like and subscribe and hopefully I'll catch you man in the next one. Bless.